everywhere you went, you heard, own a home, own a home, own a home, be a homeowner. Early part of the decade, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a mortgage. Everybody was doing it. Everybody's moving up. Property value's going up. I wanted my piece of the American dream. That dream is now a nightmare for many of the 75 million Americans who own a home. So the housing market report card is ugly. In the past two years, the housing market has lost an estimated $5 trillion as 59 million homes have declined in value. Nearly one in four homeowners, 10.7 million households nationwide are underwater on their mortgages. They owe more than their home is now worth. The housing market is so bad in California that a bank demolished 16 nearly completed homes because it was cheaper to knock them down than to finish them. Home building across the country is almost non-existent. In 2005, 2 million housing units were built in this country. Last year, it dropped nearly a quarter of that. That's left former boom towns like Las Vegas with a lot of roads to nowhere as builders ran out of money and buyers for the homes they once planned to build here. And then there's foreclosure. Nationwide, nearly 6 million households have been taken back by the bank in just the past three years, pushing down home values and leaving some neighborhoods looking like war zones. And that's the problem. People are still losing their homes, preventing a housing market recovery. Disaster is not too strong a word. Crisis is not too strong a word. All of those risky loans banks gave to homeowners are still wreaking havoc. I was nine months pregnant, just crying, going, what did we do? Jessica and Aaron Jenkins got in way over their heads when they bought their five-bedroom dream home in Corona, California. It cost them $700,000. They paid $2,800 a month on their interest-only loan, never touching the principal. It was a lot cheaper than a 30-year fix. We can afford it, so that's why we did it. But this year, their loan would reset, adding $1,100 to their monthly payment. In the next two years, nearly 361,000 loans will reset nationwide, increasing mortgage payments by an average of $1,000 per month. That's why a record 3 million more foreclosures are expected in 2010. Today, the number one cause of foreclosure is unemployment. 15.3 million Americans are now out of work. 27-year-old C.J. Mueller bought this house in Phoenix for $210,000, but then he lost his job. He tried to get his bank to modify his loan. Instead, he just got his foreclosure notice. I, a single man, will no longer own this home as of March 16, 2010 at 10 a.m. President Obama's mortgage modification program aims to permanently modify three to four million loans by 2012. So far, they've fixed 66,000. They want banks to speed up the process. But unfortunately, it's all been lip service and little action. Until the administration gets tough on lenders, we're still going to see huge amounts of foreclosures. Banks say they are simply overwhelmed and some people are beyond help. I gave up. I don't care anymore. Take the house. And the solution for many is to just walk away. Some experts say it may be better to cut your losses and ruin your credit in the short term than to pour more money into a bad investment. I paid 210 for the house. The house is worth 90,000. Would you keep the house? To keep people in their homes, credit counselor Michelle Johnson says banks should permanently convert risky loans into 30-year fixed mortgages for those who can afford the payments. It needs to be a long-term fix. It can't be simply a Band-Aid, and that's what many of the modifications appear to be. And how can I help you today, ma'am? Some mortgage firms and a few banks are going further, actually reducing the principal on loans. To date, it's enabled us to save about 15 percent more homes than we would if we, we had not used it. However, the housing market also needs buyers. John Tu and Diana Jr. just bought this four-bedroom home in Las Vegas, thanks to the $8,000 federal tax credit for first-time home buyers. We knew that once we got into the house, with the $8,000, if we manage our money right, we shouldn't lose the house. That incentive has spiked home sales, up 4.9% in the past year. However, the tax credit expires in April, and experts say shell-shocked banks need to start lending again. And until we have that, we really can't have a full-fledged housing market recovery. 
yet home buyers are much more focused on cost. It's a nice kitchen. They're heeding the warning to never spend more than 31 percent of pre-tax pay on housing. For a family making $75,000, that means not spending more than $1,900 per month. Builders are responding with smaller and more affordable homes. Pulte Homes scrapped their three-story, 3,300-square-foot home. Now they sell a two-story, 2,000-square-foot home, chopping the price tag in half from $400 to $200,000. The larger homes and the price points and the square footages we were selling at just weren't selling like they used to. In Phoenix, Philip Beer is buying up foreclosed homes giving them a major facelift and energy-saving upgrades to make them affordable. In this home, he lowered the annual utility bill from $2,000 to just $400. Let's make our existing homes better. As for the Jenkins, they'll keep their home thanks to a loan modification, but their investment will likely never pay off. What I've learned from this is that um, you don't need it. It wasn't worth it. A feeling shared by millions of Americans now living with regret. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Los Angeles.